God is good and all the time see it's a wonderful wonderful testimony is that we've, we we've heard that that inspired our faith to keep on to keep on amen life is not easy it's not full of roses and uh, it's not full of uh, you know just uh, it's not a fairy tale even in fairy tales that there is opposition right but this lo this life and this this world is, is, is a battlefield and only serious minded that overcome, only serious minded the people that set their mind on victory, they have a chance at victory. Amen church? And like Pastor Lukau, he, he reminded us once again that everything that we see in a natural is only an, a, a manifestation of uh, something that already took place in the spiritual world so therefore our battle is not against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities of darkness and the rulers of darkness amen church and today we're here to learn how to be more effective and more efficient in our battle because at the end of the day bible says that we prepare the horses but battle but the, for the battle but the victory comes from the lord amen the victory comes from the Lord. Tell your neighbor, say, your victory is on its way. Turn to your other neighbor, say, your victory is at hand. Amen, amen, amen. We're continuing our series on break free. Break free. How many people want to be free in their life completely? Come on. We're in the middle of that series uh, as Pastor Vlad already shared based on his book um, series of messages and today I'm going to I'm going to continue in that direction and we're going to talk about how to overcome in life how to break free from certain things in our life and how to stay free amen because it's important not to only become free but to walk in that freedom amen church amen let's take our reading from uh, Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 Let's read the Amplified Version first. And then they have overcome, say overcome, him by the means of the blood and the lamb, by the blood of the lamb and the utterances of their testimony. For they did not love, they did not love and cling to life even when faced with death, hold, uh, holding their lives cheap till they had to die for their witnessing. In New King James Version it says this, and they have overcame, say overcame, and by the blood of the Lamb, say blood of the Lamb, and the word of their testimony, say word of their testimony, and not loving their lives to the point of death. First is I know that every person in this place, we want to be an overcomers, amen. We want to be people that when we face challenges we over we overcome them somebody said this i don't pray for an easy life i don't pray to god for an easy life i pray to god for strength to overcome every challenge in my life because easy life first of all it's not possible in this physical life we will have an easy life when we are in heaven without worries, without anxiety, without fears, without constant uh, pressure, we will have a good life. But this life is not an easy life. But calm seas never made a uh, sailor. And uh, easy life never made anybody strong. And so today we have to learn the principles that God has set, uh, set forth for us so that we could overcome in life so we could be victorious in life and so that we will not live a life being defeated because after all we are children of the most high God and we are born by the spirit of God into his family and just like a lion gives birth to a, a lion cub so when we were born by the spirit into God's family we were born victorious we were born an overcomer we were born to overcome every obstacle in our path in Jesus mighty name if you believe it shout amen first way we overcome is by the blood of the lamb by the blood of the lamb say blood of the lamb 
See, blood has a very significant, blood is very significant. Um, so, so significant that in Leviticus, when God was uh, giving a law to nation of Israel, He forbid them to eat anything that still had blood. Because He said, God said that the life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. If you study the blood a little bit and you understand that blood plays a very critical role in our system. It carries oxygen to our entire body. It carries nutrients to our entire body. It removes every toxin from our body so that our body stay clean and healthy. Blood, um, white, white blood cells, they fight infection. Uh, they fight disease and they fight any foreign agents in our body, any intruder. So the blood has a, a big significance. That's why it needed the blood of the lamb, the most purest lamb. It, it needed the blood of the Son of God for us to be set free and for us to be saved. And there is only one blood that can bring freedom and it can bring salvation to you in Jesus name. That's why when Israelites they were they were gonna they were they were gonna leave Egypt and it was one of the last plagues and it had to do with the blood. Blood is the one that broke the grip of Egypt over Israelites and they had to use the blood of the lamb which symbolized the blood of Jesus, they, we have to understand that people in the Old Testament, they were using the blood of the Lamb for justification of their sins, for the sin offerings. As a symbol looking forward towards the cross, the same way today we're looking backwards to the cross for our redemption and our freedom. And in order for Israelites to break free from the grip of Pharaoh and Egyptians, they had to use the blood and blood broke the grip of the enemy of their life and they walked out and they were free in Jesus name. Amen church let's put our hands together. See it's by the blood of Jesus that you're free. It's by the blood of Jesus that you're saved. It's by the blood of Jesus that you find your healing. The blood of Jesus is powerful. The blood of Jesus. Demons know the power of Jesus. They tremble at that power. We're going to pray today in, uh, for, for healing and deliverance in a, in a prayer line. And when we pray, we pray with the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Because we understand there's only one thing that demons and the spiritual world recognizes and is afraid of. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen church. And it's the only, only source of our freedom and only source of our forgiveness and healing. Amen church. The blood is very significant. But many Christians, they stop at this level. They come to church. They give their life to Jesus. Their sins are washed by the blood of Jesus. Um, and they go to home group or the pastor or some some kind of a some, some person at the church or prayer line and and they go and they receive freedom and certain things are broken off of their lives maybe some addictions to alcohol cigarettes drugs pornography gambling maybe anxiety fear depression or whatever it might be and 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 they receive this relief they receive this freedom and yay it's good it's awesome and and they plateau on this in, in their walk with God because they don't it's kind of like Israelites the blood of Jesus set them free now they're free they're walking out they see their enemies being drowned uh, in a in a Red Sea God says the enemies that you see you will not see them no more and they're happy they're excited they sing the songs they celebrate but they are in a desert they're not quite in their promised land and what Israelites failed to do is what Revelation in the book of Revelation that we just read reveals to us that we as Christians don't fail to do so that we don't die in our desert never reaching our purpose never reaching our potential and never reaching what God has in store for us in our marriage in our families in our business in our spiritual walk with God in our education so that we don't just get this temporary relief yay we're out of bondage but we're stuck 
and where Israelites failed is they begin to murmur they begin to complain they begin to say oh God why did you bring us out of Egypt they begin to miss the onions out of Egypt they must have had some really good onions or something I mean I like onion but I, wanting to go back into slavery for the sake of onions that's something else but maybe I haven't been to Egypt yet one day maybe I will I'll try their onions but I highly doubt it it's worth the slavery but there even though they were free their heart their mind was still in the Egypt you know how they say it's it's easy to take a person out of the hood but it's not that easy to take the hood out of the person yeah I see some hands going out amen brother yeah back there <laughs> anyways so they <laughs> never mind uh it's not easy yes it's not easy um so anyways what the next step step that God requires of us in order for us to live a life an over, over overcomer in order for us to live a life that continues to conquer in order for us to live a life that we continue to reach forward and go to the promised land and live out the purpose that God has given us God says you have to engage your testimony your word confession you have to begin to speak life you have to begin to speak the word of God you have to begin to speak the promises of God not the situation not what situation is saying not that maybe kids are still misbehaving and not serving God not that your marriage is still not doing okay not that maybe financially still struggling not confessing the facts and what's surrounding but confessing the promise of God they overcame him and your him can be anything it could be maybe your stagnation in your financial life your stagnation in your business maybe your poor health him can be anything in your life that's not of God and Bible gives us an instructions and give us a manual in order to overcome you gotta engage with the word of God and speak out your testimony I mean speaking out that you know why are you still experiencing pain in your body but you speaking out by the blood of Jesus I am healed in his stripes I am made whole you begin not that you're ignoring your symptoms or even you start taking your medication or this or that no it's just with your mouth you agree together with God to say what God thinks about your situation right now and as you speak Bible says that the life and death in the power of your tongue you begin to move forward with God you begin to walk with God in faith because faith without action is not faith you begin to take those actions of faith begin to speak with your mouth begin to go apply for the job begin to try to get that new contract in your business starting a new business trying to go back to school and complete it and and do whatever needs to be done when you take those faith you work with God you speak the positive uh, testimony in your life then new freedom new door begins to open up God begins to open up new opportunities God begins to move things your way you know that Jesus in his lifetime he never prayed to God about the problem I read the New Testament just specifically for that reason I heard a preacher mention and I was I was reading through all Jesus prayers and all his miracles and not once when Jesus faced the problem he complained to God about it. Oh God, why did you give me all these people, women and children? What am I supposed to do with them? How am I supposed to feed them? Please give them strength to back home and get their own food. No. Jesus' Bible says he took the bread and fish. He gave thanks to God as though he had enough. That's faith speaking. When you don't have enough in your, you know, to pay for the bills, when you don't have enough to do things that you want to do, you know, instead of whining and complaining, say, God, I thank you for what I do have. And when you begin to think, uh, thank God for it God begins to do a miracle in life so Jesus he always speaks positivity he always speaks he always speaks his testimony he's at the tomb of Lazarus and Bible says that this is the only time that's mentioned that Jesus actually cried because he was a good friend with Lazarus and even in that in that part you don't see Jesus come into the come into the grave and say no God why did this happen to me I'm serving you with all my heart you know I've given my all but here you go how did you let how, how in the world did you let my best friend die and and now it's been so long that it stinks so you never hear that from Jesus on the opposite Jesus comes up and says Lord I thank you that you hear my prayer a prayer every time I pray as a matter of fact I'm not even just praying I'm just praying for the people so they at least 
that, that I look spiritual you know I know that you hear me already that's all he prayed and then he said Lazarus come forth he commanded the dead to come to life and story after story after story we see people speaking uh, Jesus speaking to a fig tree uh, uh, and um, he's, he's sending his word to heal the disease story after story Jesus never prayed about the problem never complained about it never asked God oh why I'm in this situation he always spoke the word some of you you know you 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 experience freedom in certain areas in your life God set you free from drugs alcohol he saved you your marriage is doing okay now your finances are maybe still you know struggling but it's it's, it's okay you know your your kids are uh, you know somewhat there and you you, you experienced a, a bit of a relief you're not driven by slave masters in Egypt anymore but God has more for you God has a destiny for you. God has a promise for you. God has a next step for you in your freedom. Maybe there's, you know, God helped you to overcome big addictions in life, but there's still some, some, some small things that you're struggling. That you promise yourself, promising your wife, or your kids, or uh, promising before, before, uh, to God that you'll never do, but you keep slipping into it, and you're just seeking God for freedom. God has a solution for you in every area of your life. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Somebody agrees with me. Amen. Jesus said if you'll be silent I'll, the, uh, I'll get praise from the mouths of babes. So don't get silent on me. Amen church. Begin to prophesy in your life. Begin to speak life into your self, into your business, into your family, into your situation. Prophecy is simply history told in advance. Begin to speak what you want to see God to do in your life partner with God partner with God's word that means you got to get into the word of God that means you got to dig deeper into the word of God you got to pray that God gives you a revelation so when you speak you still don't speak out of information in your head but you speak out of heart because woman with the issue of blood she Bible says that she said to herself in another translation she spoke in her heart if I touch Jesus I'll be healed and her confession brought a miracle into her life speak God's word in your life speak what God says about your situation even if it's for a long time like record mentioned you know she the widow came oh, uh, to the judge over and over and over and over and over and over again until you gotta speak it until you see it in Jesus mighty name put your hands together for Jesus I believe that in our church we have many people that have received the revelation of the importance of your word. Now we teach a lot and often about it in our home groups, uh, in our videos, uh, by messages and I believe that I believe most of you here, those of you that be coming for some time, you understand the importance of the word of God and just you got to start using it. You got to start applying it but there's another level of freedom and breakthrough and uh, overcoming another layer that there is that we see in this verse that often many refuse to go to or maybe don't know about it or maybe just are not willing to go that far and as we read the last thing that made them overcome him meaning the devil the beast is not love in their lives to the point of death not loving their lives to the point of death what does this speak of in in new testament jesus says that if your hand causes you to sin cut it off and if your eye causes you to sin you pluck it out now i don't believe that jesus meant that literally because otherwise we'll have a whole bunch of handicapped christians uh i i don't think that's that's that was the that was the intent of his saying but what i think jesus was saying was that that if there's things in your life that's causing you, that's slowing you down, that's causing you to sin, that's causing you to fall back into the same thing over and over again, you have to be so ruthless to the point of cutting out your hand, plucking out your eye. You have to be so ruthless, you have to deny yourself. Self-denial, I believe that's what Jesus was talking about. Self-control, self-discipline, that you have to, yes there is a part that God plays. 
God can deliver you and set you free from certain things but if you refuse to give up the friends that you hang out with that drink that smoke that party you can be set free all you want but if you don't leave that crowd you're gonna become a part of it that's why Jesus says a bad company corrupts good morals there are certain things that you gotta do certain things you gotta deny of yourself but they understand me but you know I, I click for them I don't have to pretend to be somebody else is it worth your freedom? Is it worth your future? Is it worth your purpose? And there are sometimes things that are not necessarily bad but it will require you to give them up in order for you to go to the next level. You know if you're praying God I want to go to the next level financially. God I want to go to the next level in my business. Well you have to understand it's a tricky prayer because it requires two things. It requires God yes but it requires more of you giving up your Netflix and chilling with friends and even to a certain degree a social life in order to hustle and grind in order to build the future that you want. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It requires a certain degree of self-denial and, and pleasure deny, and denying pleasure uh, you know, to, to achieve a certain goal and to achieve certain things in your life. When an athlete gets ready to compete, let's say in Olympics or any other sport, they go through a rigorous training. They go through a, a strict diet. They go on specific sleeping schedules. They go on even as far as you know going into oxygen tanks and this and that and whatever the things that you haven't heard it. Blood infusion, uh, white blood cells infusions into their joints and other parts of the body. Uh, all kinds of crazy stuff that can stimulate them, that can strengthen them, help them recover faster. Do you understand that concept? So that there are certain things in your life that you can pray until you're blue in the face. Unless you are willing to deny yourself of certain things, you'll never, you'll never go to the next level. Unless you are, are willing to deny your negative talk, negative self-esteem, deny your, uh, d deny your um, old habits, you will be in a wilderness. Sure, you're not dead in sin. You're not dying under the master slaves you know old habits are not hunting you down but you live a miserable life it's not fulfilling it's not it's not it's not satisfying while well, God has a unique uh, calling for you God has a unique purpose for you God has a plan for you that would would make you go to bed happy and wake up happy knowing that you're living a life of purpose it might not be the easy life but it's a life of purpose but that life requires not loving yourself not loving yourself apostle paul in romans he says this that brethren i urge you let's read that therefore i urge you brothers and sisters in the view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is your true and proper worship presenting our body as a sacrifice uh sorry that's my notes <laughs> that's not in the scripture this is your true and proper worship. I believe Apostle Paul here, he speaks of fasting. I can't think of any other thing that would, God would receive our body as a living sacrifice. Obviously Apostle Paul is not talking of self mutilation or killing ourselves. God doesn't require that. He only tested one man, it was Abraham, to give him son. Even then he stopped him. Uh, I believe the Apostle Paul is saying that we got to submit our body and submit our flesh to God. And one of the ways that we do it is by fasting. I know fasting is a, let me say this, I hate fasting with passion. Like deeply, deeply hate it. Okay, I love food. I like good food. And uh, you know, some people don't care for food. They just eat food to survive. I live to eat. I love it. Okay, I'm sorry, but just that's my weakness okay but you know when when you if you want to go to the next level with God if you want to go to the next level in your life certain things gotta be cut out you know when a branch in order for a branch to produce fruit now I've never done it I heard from farmers you know they cut the shoots from the branches what the shoots are 
uh, these extra growths, extra branches that grow, but they, they suck the juices from the tree, but they don't produce anything. In order for us to go to that next level and be in the next level of freedom financially, spiritually, emotionally, in the family, in, the, in, 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 in our relationships, there gotta be a certain level of self-denial and not loving yourself. When I was, when I was uh, with, well, multiple men of God, but particularly in, uh, with uh, uh, Prophet Shepherd Bushiri and while he was in the middle of his 90-day fast, uh, water only he was preparing it for two years and and uh, hey, I was lost I was fasting with the last 30 days of his uh, last 30 days of his uh, fasting and he said you know the reason why I do it he's like I don't have to do it it's like I'm a multi multi-millionaire I got two jets of my own I didn't get them from church I didn't get them from offerings I'm I'm the biggest supporter of my own church I got them because God gave me wisdom to do business I my family is great I'm healthy. I don't have any need from God. I'm fasting for one thing, to get closer to God so that I will be a clean channel that God can trans transfer His grace through to the people. Transfer. And you look at His ministry. You look at the growth of His ministry. You look how God is using Him mightily in the giftings of God, in the prophecy, in the healing of others. And if you don't know the backstory, you think like, you know, it's just a lucky man and just a calling in his life. But the sacrifice that they put to make sure they present themselves as a sacrifice before God that God can use. And uh, you know being around many different men of God and, and understanding that next level in ministry, next level in life, being around different godly businessmen and, and, and women and people that succeeded. I know one thing, one trait about them. There are people of great self-discipline and self-denial and what God says push the play aside for 21 days I'm gonna do it. When God says you gotta you gotta slow down on work and business, you gotta spend more time in your family, they said yes sir I'm gonna do it even if it's gonna you know if it's gonna cost me self because I'm gonna focus in here. They're able to deny themselves of the things that they want or want to achieve in order to be obedient to God and do what God has called them to do. I know there's people in this place and God is challenging you and God has been knocking in your heart but God has been provoking you to go deeper with him, to go into fasting, to go into prayer. You know that Israelites, they were supposed to be in captivity according to the prophecies 400 years and after 400 years they were supposed to leave that slavery. They were supposed to leave Egypt. They were not supposed to be in Egypt more than 400 years. This was the will of God for them. But yet Bible says, lets us know that they were there 430 years. And until the Bible says they started crying out and praying and fasting that God began to prepare Moses in the wilderness and send them back to rescue them. I don't want a situation in my life to get so bad to drive me to prayer and fasting. I want to do it because I'm obedient to God and because I want to fulfill God's vision, God's purpose in my life. On the other hand, there was Daniel. Same thing, Israelites are in captivity. Daniel, Bible says he searches the books and he figures out that 70 years is supposed to be the captivity in Babylon. And after 70 years, they're supposed to be released. See, Daniel, he was a smart man. He learned from the past. He said, Israelites in prayer and fast, they stayed there longer. I don't want to stay any longer than I'm supposed to be in captivity. So Daniel goes into prayer and fasting for 21 days. And after 21 days that the angel comes to him and he said, I was sent out to you the very first day except that I have encountered forces, king of Persia that I have to, that I had to fight against. And if you would have quit, answer would have never came to you. But because you did not quit, now you received your answer. You know what the interesting thing, history says this, that Israelites came out of Babylonian slavery, captivity on their 68th year. Think about it. I don't know what season your life is in and I don't know what you're going through. I know that God has a way out for you. I know God wants to take you out out of where you're at. But today you can partner with God to shorten the season. Today with God you can do in a small amount of time what you what will take you years to do. But it will take certain cutting, getting rid of certain things in your life, getting rid of certain 
friends maybe not not even bad but you gotta you know God has called you to do something great in your life in your business in your career in finance in the ministry that certain things gotta go I gotta focus I gotta run the race Apostle Paul says cast down every weight that slows you down every sin that's easily ensnares you gotta put it away because you have to run the race to win the prize you gotta run the race to win the prize you can't don't just live a life just to live it don't run just to run it you know like when you had a PE class in school and you have that mile run and you run it because you have to so you don't get enough but nobody cares about winning except if you're like me I had to be the first I don't know why there's always some kid that ran faster than me and I hated him but <laughs> at least I was second okay run the race apostle Paul says run the race so you can win a prize do whatever it takes to reach that goal in your life do whatever it takes to work with God to achieve that destiny some of you God called you into the ministry and you have this fairy tale that God's gonna use you in the ministry oh, I'm just gonna come out like pastor off look I'll be like hey you come out yeah God da, 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 da. yeah be free and everything's gonna be peachy or I'm just gonna go out and lay hands and demons gonna scream and and yell and and and, and you know I'm gonna be this great pastor that delivers people yeah there was few people in the old the new testament uh, they tried to cast out the demons in the name of Jesus in the name of Paul Bible says it didn't up too well for them you can't play games life is serious for serious minded you want to win at it be serious about it that means certain things gotta go certain things gotta be cut off uh you gotta get focused on what God has for you today my challenge is this is that if you want to overcome if you want to overcome you gotta die to yourself onto the point of death you know prophet Elisha he struggled in his life to raise people from the dead but when he died to himself he actually literally died and there was no more flesh and there's only bones remaining somebody threw a dead man into the grave into the open grave where Elisha prophet Elisha was there his bones were there the moment that dead body touched his bones he came back to life I believe it speaks is that when we die to ourselves when we cut ourselves for the sake of others for the sake of the dream the vision the goal for the sake of that freedom that you're looking for the next level I believe that God responds in likewise and opens the door don't get me wrong everything is by grace everything is by grace but there's certain things that if we want to be able to handle that grace we got to clean out we got to remove and we're going to march forward with Jesus amen apostle Paul says that you are a soldier of Christ soldiers are not slackers soldiers are people of discipline soldiers are people of war soldiers are people that they're focused they're not double-minded on a field you can't second guess you get killed he says you are a soldier of Christ put on the belt take up the shield of faith take out the sword which is the word of God put on the helmet of salvation you are to fight the spiritual battle because that battle is not against flesh and blood it's against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness in your life in your promised land in your family and you're going to win the battle because the victory belongs to the Lord in Jesus' name. If you receive it, say amen. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.